Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes. Today we paint an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So if you wanna learn how to paint this with just a few uh, tools and a few colors, stick with us. We'll be right back just like this. Hey, here we are. We're gonna get ready to go. Let me show you what colors we need and we'll get rocking and rolling. Today we're gonna to be using a limited color palette of uh, burnt sienna or you know dark sienna, Prussian blue, midnight black, and titanium white on this 11 by 14 inch canvas. And uh, we've already primed it with Bob Ross liquid white. So we're gonna get started and uh, make one of, my, one of my favorite little paintings to paint today. I'm gonna try to keep this one under about 40 minutes. So well, let's rock and roll. We'll first go with our Prussian blue on the end of our two inch brush. I just like to use one corner. It'll get all over the place anyway. And just start up here in the corner and kind of crisscross strokes back and forth back and forth back and forth covering all those little bits and it doesn't have to be the same you don't want it to be the same and we'll just come back in maybe give it a few darker places sort of leave the inside a little bit white and then we'll throw some clouds in there and uh, make it look real neat get it along the sides of our canvas here always want the sides of your canvas to be finished. That way, if somebody hangs it without framing it, then uh, it's not gonna look like just this unfinished side. I'll go all the way down. Kinda hard with my left hand, but I don't, don't wanna get in your guys' way. And you can just literally do it anywhere, because all this stuff at the bottom is gonna be covered over. So you can go back and forth this way, back and forth, as long as you're making X shapes, back and forth it'll blend out real nicely and along the bottom there throw it on the top of our canvas real quick and then we can lock it down and like this got to make those funny noises otherwise the paint doesn't stick and we're going to lock it in place here shouldn't be moving around on us anymore Okay, then we're going to go right into our Midnight Black without washing the brush, just right into the black. I'm going to go in with the top. There we go, nice and black. Just going to make it a stormy looking sky, just back and forth. I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way as much as possible. Come down here in the bottom, put a couple shadows in, just back and forth. Back and forth, side to side. Remember, leave this area a little bit wider, and then we'll come in. Just without even washing our brush, we're just going to blend this whole thing out into this dark, stormy sky. And go back and forth, back and forth, just across the whole thing. Now we got it much darker up at the top than we do down around the bottom. I'm gonna finish throwing our black up here, cover the top of this bit. And that way all of our sides will be done. And like I said, I'm trying to stay out of your way. So if it looks like I'm a little screwy over here, it's because I'm trying to get out of you guys' way so you can see what I'm doing. Go along the side here. And just like that, this nice messy looking dark bluish blackish canvas. Exactly what we're going for. We've only got a couple colors today, so we're going to be using a lot of the same colors everywhere. You just want to have this nice little canvas. Now just to take out all those brush marks, just go back and forth, side to side, back and forth so you get all the way to the bottom. Make sure your liquid white is, is you know, applied on there properly. Otherwise these colors won't blend together and you'll have all these big spotchy, splotchy places. We're going to wash the brush out. I use a brush cleaner from Lowe's. Looks like this, Jasco brush cleaner. It's a little bit stinkier than the low odor mineral spirits, but I think it works a little bit better. A little bit stronger, and really gets the paint out of your brush nicely. And then every time I bend down, I've got a little beater bucket down here that has a golf ball basket down the bottom of it that's now stuck into all that old paint. And then I just beat it back and forth across that golf ball basket to get the brush clean. So whenever you see me dip out of frame like that, because I'm cleaning the brush off. Then 
Now our brush is mainly clean. Dab it on a bit of paper towel down here at the bottom. And then we're gonna switch brushes to a fan brush here. You'll need a two inch brush, a one inch brush, a fan brush, and a palette knife. Be pretty much all the tools we're gonna use today. I like using different size fan brushes, a bigger one for the base of my tree and then a smaller one to do the details and the highlights on it. But for now, we're gonna go right into the titanium white, just right on the end of the brush. Don't even need it on both sides, just one side. And we're gonna make this weird looking messy shape up here. Just kind of jiggle it back and forth. It's really all you gotta do. I'm not really trying to blend anything, just trying to drop in some of this white up here. And then we're gonna come in with our one inch brush and just kind of make small circles, just very lightly. And all that's doing is just kind of mixing, just disturbing the paint that's up there. So, and you don't want to mix it all the same. You want to have these lighter spots and darker areas and be the shadows of your clouds. Once we've done that, we're going to go straight up with the two inch brush, which just kind of flattens the paint down a little bit and then come side to side. You can go either way, doesn't matter. Whichever way you want your clouds to look. And then we're going to go same old dirty brush, but the other side of it, going to go into the little bit of the uh, midnight black there and just come up into here very lightly. You don't want a lot of this midnight black and it's very powerful stuff. So just very lightly go back in same one inch brush that we haven't cleaned yet. And again, just disturb the paint, I'm not trying to blend it all the way out. You want some parts thicker and some parts less, just disturb it. Take our two inch brush again, swipe it up, come across to the side or to the other side. And as long as you blend it all this out and it's light enough, it's not gonna move across back and forth. So then again, we're gonna go into our liquid white, uh, sorry, our titanium white. Get a good amount of it on the end of the brush there. And then we're gonna come up one more time with this white cloud. And get it all up into that black, darker area. You don't want to cover all the dark, you just want to have it up there. And you literally just make a mess, that's what I say. That's what my, my apron even says, make a mess. That's all you got to do when you paint like me. You're just very lightly, very lightly, just disturbing this white, thick, titanium white that we put on. And that way we've got different layers in our clouds. we got a wider layer, a little bit of shadow, and then another white layer here. Again, we're going to swipe up and you can see this one's a lot thicker than the one is above. So a lot of times you'll get these little drag marks that go up like that. It just makes it look like the wind is kind of pushing it up and you come side to side. And all it's doing is just flattening it down a little bit. It's literally it. You can even take, if you want, just underneath with a little bit more of that black. You can even just mix it in, right? A few little circles with your fan brush. And that looks like we've got these dark kind of stormy clouds that we're working with here. Go side to side again, just like so. Now we've got this wicked kind of dramatic sky. I usually never paint blue skies. I love to put color up in my sky, but today with our limited palette, we're just gonna do a blue sky, but again, it's a dramatic sky. It's not just a plain blue sky. Wash our little fan brush off there onto the paper towel. I'm gonna get rid of this kind of grayish, bluish mixture that we made here. Scrape all that up so it doesn't dilute the rest of our white. <clears throat> Save that bit for later. Might as well clean all of our brushes right now. There we go. I like that, that's a cool looking sky. A lot of times I like to back up from it. You just kind of look and you can see where you need to fix stuff, you know, what you need to do if you want to make it brighter in some areas or darker in some areas. And uh, I, I kind of like the way that looks right there. You can even make this a little bit softer down the bottom. We're gonna have our mountain come up into there. Again, that's why we kind of leave this area lighter. We don't put so much paint like we do up in the corners because it's gonna be harder to mix your thick paint if you've got a whole bunch of thick base paint on there as well. So you just want to leave it a little bit lighter than normal than the rest of your sky. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll mix up our, our mountain color. And normally I'll use the crimson to add into the mountain, but today with our limited color palette, we'll just use the black and the blue. 
I think get a good little mixture of both of them. On this smaller canvas, we're not gonna need a whole lot for the mountain. The majority of it we're gonna need to save for our trees, so you want a fair enough amount up here to use for the base color of our trees. Throw a little bit of white in there, not too much, because you don't want it to be the same kind of gray color as already up in your mountains, otherwise your, uh, in your clouds, sorry, otherwise your mountains are gonna get lost. So you want it to be a little bit darker than our cloud color, which is why we mix them in like that with the white. And a lot of times when I'm mixing it up, I'll put in too much white, so we'll just add a little bit more black in there. On this nice dark, kind of bluish blackish color. Wipe off our palette knife, and then we'll come right in here. You wanna get, you know, a good amount of it on your on your palette knife. I don't know well, how well you can see it there. But a good enough amount that you don't have to come back six, seven, eight times. You can do it in one or two or three times here. So we're gonna have this kind of jaggedy mountain come up into our clouds. And it's, you know, when you watch Bob, he doesn't say it, but he'll make sure that he's got these light and dark areas around his mountain so it really pops out. You don't wanna just put the mountain straight up into the clouds where you have nothing in between. And when you really watch closely how he chooses where to put his mountains and stuff, it's a neat, neat experience. Let's see, why don't we do a little double there, do a little double peeker, come down, maybe got another couple humps over here, like this. And yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine, you want it to be a little bit different, and you don't want it to be, you know, triangles, you want to have these imperfections where you have these little bumps and, and weird shapes that come out. No mountain is 100%, you know, like a pyramid. So you want to have these little imperfections in there and make it look more realistic. And scrape it down. Doesn't matter. All this stuff underneath here we're going to cover, so you don't have to worry about what's under there. I'm going to scrape off the majority of that paint that we put on. Maybe make another little hump over here with it. Scrape it all off nice and hard, just leaving the top edge. And what we want to do, and then we'll come in with our one-inch brush and kind of pull it out. Just kind of grab it and pull, and then as you get towards the bottom, you just want to kind of same crisscross strokes, just kind of mix it up. And these will tell you where to put your your snow. You can have all these little imperfections and different angles, and that'll tell you where you can put your snow and where you want to put your shadow. In. So say we'll have this one, and we'll come down this way. And who knows, we'll take this one, maybe wrap it around, or you can come straight across. It's up to you. Up to you. And then just kind of blend it down here at the bottom where it just gets nice and fuzzy. Go this way, come up there, maybe off to the side. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look like mine, it doesn't have to look like anything. It's gotta look like what you want it to look like. But don't force it. If it doesn't, doesn't go the way that you want it to go, then just, Change it up a little bit. Go with the canvas. Let the canvas tell you where to put stuff. It's a lot of times how I paint. I never know what it's gonna look like before I go into it. And I come in here and just kind of let the canvas tell me that this mountain's sort of sloping this way and this one maybe comes in front or it kind of wraps around and there's a shadow over here. You know, it's never gonna be exactly the same no matter how many times you paint the same painting. It's never gonna be exactly the same. So don't force it, just let it happen. Let it happen. All right, we'll wash this brush off. Back up here, dab it on our paper towels that are over here. Take a step back and look at this sucker. All right, now with whatever remaining mixture we have, we can use that for our snow and our shadowy snow, right? So we'll just mix it up. You want it to be a little bit brighter, but not pure white, right? And then I like to put my shadows in first. Kind of tells me where you know where everything else is going to go and that's almost too too much the same color of the mountains so we're going to add a little bit more white you want to be able to tell a difference maybe a little bit of blue Throw some blue in there you want to tell where there we go and then what we're doing is just just very lightly dragging along and just letting the the very littlest bit of the paint get on there don't have to be 
You don't want to force it. You want to have it where it breaks in all these little areas and it just looks cool and more realistic like that. If you force it too much, then it's not going to work out well. You will put a little bit of shadow up in here. Shadow of that peak. Maybe over here will come down. Like I said, you don't want to force it. The more you keep going over it, the more you're going to smush it and it's not going to, you know, you're not going to have these cool breaks. It's going to all turn into this. You know what I mean? There's nothing that'll break about it like that. So save all this extra paint. We're not going to, we're not going to let that go to waste, okay? We're going to save that stuff and use it in different areas. There we go. Now we have our, our snow shadows in there. And I like to put the shadows in because then you can play with the with the highlights of the snow a lot more. You know, if you do your white snow and then you're trying to just add in little bits of shadow in different places, it, sometimes it doesn't come out as well. For me, anyway. So we're going to get a good amount of the titanium white right on the end. And come up here and just very lightly just let it do what it wants to do. You don't want to force it. You don't want to drop your palette knife either like I just did. And you don't want to cover up all these little sections of your mountain color either. See how we're doing that? Just kind of blends down into our shadows. We don't want to force it. We don't want to do anything. Let the canvas tell you what to do. I'm just going to come down right in between our shadows here. Maybe we got this little bit that goes down there. Come over here. Come down this way. And again, don't try to cover everything. You don't want everything to be covered like that. And make this wicked little little break here and then underneath here is going to be some shadow what we can do is just barely pull the littlest bit of snow over and bam now we have this cool little cool little ridge there I think shit we can even put one over here drag it over this way and now we've got these places where it's casting shadows in different spots right just drag it over just the smallest bit just to kind of mix the white with that other color there. Make sure we get a little bit of white on the very tip top. Right, bam, just like that. And the more you play with it, the more you're going to mix all these little broken pieces in together. So resist. Try not to, try not to do too much. You know what I mean? You don't want to do too much because then you'll hate yourself, you go back and say, Josh, I kept playing with it and playing with it and you know, it just didn't look like I wanted it to look anymore. And I say, yep, yeah, I've done the same thing a thousand times. And you either scrape it all off and start over or you just live with it and you remember the mistakes you made and, uh, and you try not to do those again next time. So now we're gonna take our two inch brush, nice, clean, dry, we haven't used it in a little while. And we're just gonna swipe up in the direction that we went, just opposite direction of how we laid the snow down, right? So we're gonna swipe up a little bit, and then come up this way, just the, just the littlest bit. I mean, you can even see on the end of the brush there that we're only using the couple top bristles of the brush, right? We're just coming up, coming up this way. And all it's doing is just kind of mushing the bottom down and just kind of making it a little bit blurry. It's not as, as detailed as it is on the top. And I can even see here on the top of this peak and I've forgotten a little bit of snow up here. There we go. And then I mean, you can sit there and mess with it for hours. You can do whatever you want to do. Okay, you know what might look cool actually is if we take a little bit more of that white and come down here and make another little swoopy little canyon to our mountain here. Again, take it, swipe it up. Just the littlest bit. You don't want to kill everything. You don't want to blur everything out. Come to the side, come up. You can take a little bit of darker shadow color. Maybe go underneath here, just the littlest bit, like it's casting this dark shadow down here. Take some, you can put the dark in. Wherever you feel it's not dark enough, you can put more in there. You can put straight black in there if you wanted to. The problem is, the more black you put in, the cooler it starts to look, and then you can't stop yourself from doing it. So just the littlest amount of black. Okay, and we'll come in, kind of fix what we ruined there, a little bit more, bam. So now I've got these dark shadows underneath our bits where our mountain is turning. And then we're going to take our one inch brush, and we're just going to 
make little circles, just like always. You make little circles. And all that's doing is blending this white at the bottom and making some fog. We'll even get some extra white on there. And we'll just make some fog. And you want it, you don't want to mix it out all the way. You want to have it brighter in some places, less in other places. And just mix that fog up. And mix it all along there. Make that thing so it just looks like this mountain is just kind of floating out in space. You just want your mountain to float. And when you paint with me, I say it all the time, you're gonna need a lot of white paint. I love using that white paint. Especially against these darker colors, you just have, it makes it, you know, you get this cool fog effect against these darker colors of your mountain. Now we've done our fog, then we're just gonna fluff it. That's all we're doing. Just gonna fluff it up, fluff it this way, fluff it back and forth. And you don't want it to be a straight line across, right? You want to have it come down and come up and come down just so it's not, doesn't look like a razor blade went across it. You know what I mean? You don't want it to be straight like that. Let's see. So now we're going to come back in. We're going to get the rest of that snow color that we didn't use, right? I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. Grab some more black, some more blue, and just make it darker. Alright, mix it up real good. Real good. Flatten it all out, wipe off your knife. <clears throat> Come back in with our fan brush, nice big fan brush. What I do to get it, you know, nice and in the bristles, just wiggle it on the way down. Just wiggle it. A little wiggle. And then we're gonna come in from this side over here and just start popping in our trees by just mainly just pushing down at a 45 degree angle. And then when you start to run out of paint, bam, you flip your brush over and then you get some more. All right, we're gonna follow down our little fog. You wanna leave some foggy bits between the mountain. You don't wanna put your trees up here in the snow. Everything's gonna to mix together. We're just gonna come down. It's just gonna trail off over here. It's lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And then we might even blend some of these out. We just wanna, over here it's gotta be nice and thick and textured. And it's going to be light over there. Okay, we're going to take our two inch brush, just very lightly, just like we did the mountain, just going to swipe up. That's it. Just swipe up, swipe up, swipe up, swipe up. And that just basically fills in all these gaps. You don't want to cover them all the way. You want to leave a few bits of light that come in there. If you want to cover them for the most part. And we're going to take the littlest, tiniest little fan brush you can find and just add some detail on the top of these trees. Just like that. Just so that. This guy stands out a little bit from the rest of them, so you can tell it's a pine tree back there. All right, just the top. You don't have to make it real detailed. Just so he stands out as one of the big pop of trees out there in the, in the forest. All right, maybe do one over here. This nice, messy little tree shape, because all this stuff underneath we're going to smush down anyway. All right, we're gonna smush it. Like that, I can just tell there's a few few trees out there with the rest of the stuff. I'm gonna make these a little bit taller, even. Still want to be able to see the fog back there. We're gonna have it like a hill. We've got it on a hill over here, right? So these ones are a little bit taller. And then we're gonna keep going down and going down and going down and going down. And we're gonna mush it, mush it up like that. And then we're gonna take the bottom. I'm just gonna pull it out. Pull it straight out. Straight as you can get it over to the side. And you can see, just like the fog, we don't want to have it in a straight line. So this side is a little bit higher than it is over here. See what I mean? Got it up here, and then the bottom of this one's down here. So you want to have that, that progression going down because it makes it look like these are further away and these are coming up closer. Okay? And again, it doesn't all have to be the same blue we can even take these ones up here and kind of pull them down on an angle so it looks like there's a a hill up on this side right doesn't all have to be the same blue over here you want it to be different you know, different color there we go we can even take a little bit of white and make our our little trail that's going to go off there right Just, again real messy real light 
And as it gets closer to us, we want it to be wider, right? Thinner back here, wider as it gets closer. And then it's gonna look like a little trail that we're gonna follow back into the, into the forest back there. So up here with this last little bit of our white that we've got left, if you need more, you can always go back and get more. I'm just gonna put a little bit of snow cover right here on the hill. You don't want it to be too thick. Just wanna have a little bit of detail up here. Just a little, and again, don't overwork it. Don't do it too much. It's not gonna look like you want. And then again, we're gonna swipe up in the way that we put the snow down, right? Swipe up into that hill. And you can even take, you know, take a littlest bit of white on your brush and put a couple highlights on these trees. Just a few. I don't want to do too many. Again, we don't have many colors to work with here today, so can't do too much. All right, we got that. It's going back. These ones are going back. And we just want to have this progression back and forth of all of these little bushes in our little path back there, right? Okay. All right, we're going to come back to our white. You throw a little bit more on this hill. You don't want to have your angles too mixed up either. You want them to be pretty similar. You know, we got this hill coming down and then they go pretty much straight across. So when you're doing your swipes and stuff, make sure you remember the, you know, the angles that you're trying to create. Otherwise it'll look funny. Then we're going to go back over and swipe all these, swipe them up and just blend our snow into almost nothing. You don't want it to be a lot. Okay, we can even come back here, pop in a little bit of, just some bushes, right? Just some grassy bits that are sticking up out of the, out of the snow, just very lightly. Come up, just make them a little bit taller. And now we've got this distinction in our, in our snow bank. There's something about this area back here that's just pissing me off. Bring that bit. Maybe it's a little bit too thick back there. I'm just gonna come over. Then we get our bit of snow. Wash our brush real quick. Starts getting too. I'm a lazy painter. There we go. On to our paper towel. Get some more white in here. And we're just gonna make our path a little bit more noticeable. I'm gonna lead back behind this tree that we're gonna put in. You can't see that. We just want our forest back here, maybe to have a bit of fog coming down. We'll take the white, get a little bit of fog in those trees. And just mix it just very lightly like we did with our with our clouds up here and the fog back here, right? You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to put too much or too little. I just want to have this misty area that our guy's gonna walk back into and kind of forget where he is. Like that, make sure our path is straight. Make sure we got this blended in. So just, you want it to be real soft. All right, if you have to go back in and fix your little grassy bits, you can do that. You can make these trees back here a little bit more noticeable in the front. And don't worry, you can go back and you can play all day with this stuff. Right, until it looks the way you want it to look. Let's get a few more back here. We got this little foggy area. There we go. Now we got some fog coming in behind our trees. Mix all that up there. Straight across. And just work it until you like it. Doesn't have to look like mine, doesn't have to look like anybody's. Just want it to look like yours. Right, and the snow come down. And you can literally sit here and play with it for hours. But we're not gonna do that. Come back in, fix some of those little grassy bits that I mixed up, just by literally pushing it against the canvas. So you're just leaving this weird shape. Whatever sticks will stick, and then straight up and you make these dark colored grass bits. Works with green, it works with yellow, you can do it you know, just with the straight black or the bluish black mixture that we made. 
and gives it this cool effect of grass that's kind of popped up through the snow, those dark bits of grass. All right, we can tell we have our little path here, right? Just gonna mark it out for you guys. A little bit like that, and that's where it's gonna be. It's gonna kind of lead back into the, into the distance. So, what we can do, put a little bit of that, just kind of, yeah, and this thing over here, we're gonna throw a big tree behind, so don't worry about that. Over there. We might as well, since we're here, we're gonna do our <clears throat> our uh, fence posts. All right, we'll do that. We just need a little bit of black, a little bit of blue. That same kind of mixture we've been doing. Get a little chunk of it on your on your knife. And remember, the <clears throat> the one that's furthest away is gonna be the smallest. You're just gonna sort of touch it, maybe pull over just the littlest bit. The next one's gonna be a little bit taller and a little bit wider, right? And as they come closer, they get bigger and wider to us as they get closer, okay? Like so, which means taller and longer down here at the bottom. I'm gonna forget about that. We'll do our last one maybe over here. Just pulling, just slightly pulling to the side. You don't want to make them humongous. You don't want them to be too thin either, but they don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. This is just an old fence that got left out in the middle of the forest out there and has fallen into disrepair, okay? It doesn't have to look exactly perfect. Okay, then we're gonna go almost straight across. Make our little beams, right? We come up here, we don't want the line to be on the same line. We want to be a little bit angled and a little bit higher. Right? They'll eventually connect. Like that. And I like throwing a, an old broken beam in there, like this one kind of falling off. And now it's on the ground down over here. Not exactly at the same line, you know what I mean? And then here, we're gonna continue with our beam. Again, they don't have to line up perfectly. This is just an old fence that left out. And then we'll even continue it over here to go off to the side of the canvas. All right. Just like that. You can do it with your knife, you can do it with a brush. You can do it with whatever you want. this one it's connected this guy actually is not exactly what I want I keep looking at it and it's just irritating me. so we're gonna blend it out right it's as close as you can get and we're gonna come back in and make it even more of a downward angle all right like it's all broken and beat up down here. And again, we're just gonna kind of smooth out the bits we don't want. This whole thing is just irritating me. Make this one a bit longer, make this one a bit longer. Which again, I need to fix this. And we're just gonna blend it out. Like a little foggy area behind there and just keep playing with it until you like it. There we go. Come down like that. All right. Bam. Don't forget our last beam down here. Like so. Now we can take our white and do the same thing and just add a little bit of snow on top of our beams. Right. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want a little bit of snow clinging to the top of your beam there. And if it gets too thick and it doesn't want to stay on there, just mix your titanium white with a little bit of liquid white. Come back in and just stick it to the top. And just follow your, follow your angles, right? And with the liquid white, it helps it stick to this thicker paint a lot easier. 
Okay. Like so. We got one over here where the snow is going to rest on top of this beam. We come back in on this last one that wasn't so bright. And then we can do it on the very top as well. Yeah, I've got this little tiny palette knife. It's a odd shape, but it works good just for putting the snow on the top of these poles. All, right. All we're doing is just touching and kind of dragging down just a little so we can see that there's a bit of snow that's stuck to the top of this pole right here. Maybe one on the last one. Just like that. Now I've got this old beat up fence. And you could take your brown, you could have done, I guess we didn't really use the brown, but uh, you can do whatever you like. Okay, and we're gonna take our bottoms of our poles and we're just gonna pull out sideways. This one you don't really have to mess with down at the bottom too much. Pull straight out and then go back in with a little bit of our white. And just put a little snow back and forth across these things. Nothing too crazy. All right, you don't want it to be all white down here. You still want to have some of your shadows and you want to be as straight as possible. Just as straight as you can be. You want it to I kind of tell there's some snow there. You can even do it with your with your palette knife if you want. Just pull across very softly. All right, we've got these little bits of snow that are almost blown across the landscape, right? And then this will be our path right here. And then the further we go, the smaller it gets. Okay, you can go back and forth. The further off in the distance it is, the smaller that we're pulling side to side. Okay, with these ones, just want to flatten it out just the littlest bit. Try not to touch your poles. All right, we're going to start taping again. You know what? We could even do one more little pole right on the edge of our of our snow bank there. Make it thinner than the rest, and then with the small edge of the knife, right? Just since we have this leftover paint right here, we'll make our other poles. Again, they need to be thinner and smaller than the, the ones that are closer up to us because they are much further away, right? There we go, now we just added one more little section of pole there. We can get some more liquid white. Get a littlest bit right on the top. Just a small little bit of snow. Some of these you can drag over if you want. You can do anything you want to do. All right, and give our wood a little bit of uh, life character to it. And you can see it up close, but if you're looking from back there, it's hard to see. So we'll just take, I'm talking about the smallest amount of white. And we're not trying to cover up all this dark color either. All right? It'll make these logs look nice and frozen like they've been out there. And the wood is just so cold. Still got our white on the top. I'm just pulling down just to make it look a little bit more messy. And that'll make it look like these logs have just been out there freezing to death. And the old farmer is just done forgotten about them. All right. Now we'll go in and we're going to take the last bit of our blue and black paint all of it that we had left. Might as well throw a little bit of white in there. And take it all, and this will be the most paint that we use in one go. Okay, a lot of times I see that people, when they're trying to make their trees, or if you have trouble making your trees, they may not be thick enough to start with. And then you put on your highlights and everything starts mixing together. It's because you want this nice, thick, chunky bit of paint for everything to stick to. So again, we're gonna, we might even have to go to the back to the box to get some more paint in here. But we want it nice and thick on there. Not sure how, if you can see how thick it is. 
and then we're gonna come up here. We want it to be taller than our mountain in the back, otherwise it's not gonna look like it's up close, right? It's gonna look like it's further away. Definitely want it taller than these trees in the back here. So why don't we go up there, make a little line. Sometimes I'll give myself a guide to go down, just like that. Load it thick, full of paint, and then just touch. And all we're doing is coming at it at an angle and just touching it with the corner. And the further you get down, I'm gonna go in slow motion here for you guys. The further you get down, then you can start twisting it and using the whole brush, okay? At different angles. Just like this. Take it, once it starts thinning out, flip it back over, get back in there with some more paint. You want this paint to be the thickest it can possibly be, nice and sticky on the canvas. You want your brush to stick to, uh, to the canvas as you're trying to pull it away. You want it to be stuck on there because that's how you're gonna get that nice highlight paint to, to, to stick onto this real thick paint. Okay, you don't wanna cover up all your mountains. You don't want it to be, you know, start up here. You don't want it to be down here by the time you finish. Try to keep it, you know, the same kind of little, same angle. You don't want it to be this huge, long pyramid shape or mountain shape looking tree. And not all these bushes have to come out the same length. You want to be able to see behind them. That's why we put that grass back there. That's why we made our path kind of turn around. Because we're coming down this road and then it's going to turn and go the other way. Okay, remember to finish the sides over here where your tree comes off. Doesn't have to be nuts. Just a little bit. And depending on how big your tree is, you can add another smaller tree in here. I'm not going to with this one because it's going to come in too far with our, uh, with our path. And it's just gonna kind of disappear. So, I'm gonna add some bits of grass back in there. Just wanna be careful though, once you've already done it, you don't wanna go too far and ruin it. I've done it before. Where you do that one thing and then you say, shit, I wish I wouldn't have done that. There we go. We've got a little bit of grass around our pole. We can see we've got some snow coming down, some tall grass. Just kind of in this little snowy meadow with our path going through. Now I'm going to switch to a much smaller. I'm going to switch to a much smaller fan brush to do our highlights. You can see the difference in size, okay? It's about half the size, and that is going to keep me from, you know, putting too much on at once, okay? So what we're going to do is grab a good amount of our liquid white, okay? We're going to mix it in with this bluish, grayish color. I'm gonna grab some more blue. So it's just not, you know, exactly pure white. I'm gonna have it be a little bit bluer. And that gives us a nice little color combo with this real dark blue. We want it to be really light blue, like that. Okay, so we'll scrape it all up into a little pile. Nice and marbled in texture. Don't wanna mix it too much. And then we're gonna go in with our smaller fan brush and just get it on the end. Okay, you don't need to you don't need to load up the whole brush. Okay, you don't want to load it up, you just want it to be on the end of it. And we're gonna come up here, we're gonna to touch very lightly, and we're gonna skip. We're gonna leave some of that dark in there. Okay, same thing, kind of rotating back and forth on the top of our branches that we've already done. And you don't want to be pushing very hard right here because you're going to smush all these cool textured bits of your of your tree, okay? And come down. Stay on top of those branches. Leave some of that dark in there. And as you come down to the bottom, you just get less and less. Touch it lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. So there's almost nothing left. And now we've got this wicked pine tree that's kind of stuck down in there. And that's pretty much it, guys. Quick little, how long was that? About 40 minutes, like I said. So what we're gonna do for mine, I'll show you guys a little trick. Uh, for my paintings, we're gonna get a little bit of liquid paint thinner, sorry if my face is in the way, right into our black little remnants of what we had left on our palette. Smallest brush you can get. And in my paintings, I paint my family into every painting, so we've got me right here. Let's see. 
bird. It'd be hard to see. Even though I haven't used this brush in a while. Damn thing. Alright, got the one bird there. And you want it to be light and small. And that's why you have this. If you don't have a yardstick, get a yardstick. They're like $2 at Lowe's or Home Depot. And you can rest your hand so you can make really fine details like you're coloring with a pencil and you're not touching the wet paint. Okay? So get that. So let me get a little bit more. So that's me. There's my wife. And then my daughter down here. Smaller than birdie. And that's how you can tell you've got one of mine. If it's got these three birds in it, or if you can see the Mordor painting behind it, it has three ring rings, three of something flying up in the sky, and you know you've got a JK original there. Damn. Now we're gonna sign it, and we're gonna call it good. You can choose to sign wherever you want, whatever color you want, um, especially on these limited color palettes. I mean, the majority of my paintings, I'm just using liquid white. It's easy, it's light, and uh, it's gonna stick to whatever we already have up here. I don't have to, you know, make it any thinner. And so I'm gonna pick a nice dark spot down here in the corner. We're gonna throw the signature on there and we're gonna call it done. So if you guys like this painting, uh, subscribe to my channel if this was easy for you. It's a quick painting with just three colors. It's all you need. So if you don't have a lot of brushes or if you don't have a, you know, a lot of color to work with, you can do a painting just like this in about 40 minutes. You need a palette knife, two fan brushes, uh, and the Bob Ross two inch and one inch blender brushes. Pretty much all you need. So limited tools, limited color palette, and a little canvas or a larger canvas. You can expand this onto a much bigger canvas if you wanted to. Um, but just like that, we got it knocked out. And uh, like I said, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up or a subscribe or like my page, like this post, share it uh, with your friends and show them, you know, save it for later. You can, if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, all it takes is a little bit of practice. So if you like this painting, uh, you can follow along with this tutorial, like it, share it, like my Facebook page at Happy Landscape Art, which will take you to Happy Little Landscapes. I'm on Instagram as well at Happy Little Landscapes. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel by searching Happy Little Landscape Tutorials or Oil Painting Tutorials. I don't know, such a long name, I forget about it. You can search my name, Josh Kirkham, you'll see it right above where I post this. And uh, yeah, if you like it enough to purchase it or if you wanna send it to someone else, uh, my Etsy shop is etsy.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art, and that will take you to my Happy Little Landscapes Etsy shop. So. If you guys like this, uh, do the tutorial, send me the photo. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Once again, thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next painting.